Good morning, everyone. My topic for the presentation is path loss and shadowing. This is the content page. We will we will first discuss about the introduction about the path loss and shadowing, then the transmit and receive model, free space path loss, rate crossing, empirical path loss models, simplified path loss model, shadow fading, combined path loss and shadowing. Introduction. The wireless radio channel possess a severe challenge as a medium for reliable high-speed communication. Not only is it susceptible to noise, interference, and other channel impediments, but these impediments change over time in unpredictable ways as a result of user movement and environment dynamics. Here, we will characterize deviation in the received signal power over distance due to path loss and shadowing. Path loss is fund amount of attenuation experienced by the signal and is caused by the dissipation of the power radiated by the transmitter as well as the by the effects of propagation channel. Shadowing is caused by the obstacles between the transmitter and receiver that attenuate signal power through absorption, reflection, scattering, and deflection. Received power variation due to path loss occurs over long distances up to 100 meter from from 100 meter to 1000 meter, whereas variation due to shadowing occurs over distances that are proportional to the length of the obstruct obstructing object, that is 10 meter to 100 meter in outdoor environments and less in indoor environments. If the variations in the received power due to path loss and shadowing occur over relatively large distances, then variations are referred to as large scale propagation effects. And if these variations occur over a very short distances, on the order of the signal wavelength, then are referred to as a small scale propagation effect. The figure illustrates the ratio of the received to transmit power in decibels dB versus log distance for the combined effect of path loss, shadowing, and multipart. Transmit and receive model. This is a very simple model where we assume the transmission distances on the earth are very small and are not to be affected by the earth curvature. Also, all the transmitted and received signals that we consider are real. This model gives rise to the equivalent low pass representation of band pass signal, which we use for our transmitted and received signals. For an example, when the transmitter or receiver is moving, the received signal will have a Doppler shift of Fd equal to V cos theta upon lambda associated with it where theta is the arriving angle of the received signal relative to the direction of motion. V is the receiver velocity towards the transmitter in the direction of motion. And lambda equal to C by FC is the signal wavelength, where C is the speed of light. A geometry associated with the Doppler shift is shown in the figure. The linear path loss of the channel is defined as the ratio of transmit power to C power, that is, PL equal to PT upon PR, where the signal of PT is transmitted through a given channel with corresponding received signal RT of power PR, and PR is averaged over any random variations due to shadowing. In general, dB path loss is non-negative number, and path loss of the channel as the value of the linear path loss in decibel is PLDB equal to 10 log 10 PT upon PRDB. And therefore, the channel does not contain active elements and thus it can only attenuate the signal. The dB path gain is defined as a negative of the dB path loss, which is generally a negative number. Free space path loss. When there are no obstructions between the transmitter and receiver, and that the signal propagates along a straight line between the two, the channel model associated with this transmission is called as the line of sight channel. And the corresponding received signal is called as a LOS signal or ray. Free space path loss is defined as the path loss of the free space model. PLDB equal to 10 log 10, PT upon PR equal to minus 10 log 10, GL lambda square upon 4 pi D whole square where d is the distance that the wave travels and the free space path gain is thus given by pg equal to minus pl 
equal to 10 log 10 GL lambda square upon 4 pi D whole square, where GL is a product of the transmit and receive antenna field radiation patterns in the LOS direction. Ray tracing. In a typical urban or indoor environment, a radio signal transmitted from a fixed source will encounter multiple objects in the environment that produces reflected, diffracted, or scattered copies of the transmitted signal as shown in the figure. These additional copies of the transmitted signal known as multipath signal components can be attenuated in power, delayed in time, and shifted in phase and or frequency with respect to the LOS signal path and the receiver. The multipath and the transmitter signal are come together at the receiver, which often produces distortion in the received signal relative to the transmitted signal. Therefore, in ray tracing, we assume there is a finite number of reflectors with known location and dielectric properties. Ray tracing techniques approximate the propagation of electromagnetic waves. Thus, the effect of reflection, diffraction, and scattering on the wave front are approximated using simple geometric equations instead of Maxwell more complex wave equations. For example, 2 ray model, 10 ray model. 2 ray model. The 2 ray model is used when a single ground reflection dominates the multipath effect as shown in the figure. The C signal consists of two components the LOS, LOS component or ray, which is just the transmitted signal propagating through free space and a reflected component or array, which is the transmitted signal reflected off the ground. For asymptotically large D, X plus X dash, which is approximately equal to L, which is approximately equal to D, the received signal power is approximately PR equal to root over GL HTHR upon D square whole square PT, where D denotes the horizontal separation of the antennas, HT, the transmitter height, and acha the receiver height. The figure shows the received power versus distance for two ray model. This is a plot as a function of distance for frequency equal to 900 MHz, HT equal to 50 meter, HR equal to 2 meter, GL equal to 1, and the transmit power is normalized so that the plot starts at 0 dBm. This plot can be separated into three segments. For small distances d less than HT, the two rays add constructively and the path loss is slowly increasing. For distances greater than HT and up to a certain critical distance DC, the wave experiences constructive and destructive interference of the two rays, resulting in a wave pattern with a sequence of maxima and minima. This maxima and minima are also referred to as small scale or multipath fading. At a critical distance DC, the final maximum is reached, after which the signal power falls off proportionally with d to the power minus 4. This rapid fall off with distance is due to the fact that d greater than dc for great greater than dc the signal components only combine destructively and so are out of the phase by at least pi. Empirical path loss models. Most mobile communication systems operate in a complex propagation environment that cannot be accurately modeled by free space path loss or ray tracing. A number of path loss models have been developed over the years to predict the path loss in typical wireless environments such as large urban microcells, urban microcells, and more recently inside the buildings. These models are mainly based on empirical measurements over a given distance in a given frequency range for a particular ge geographical area or building. In these models, Measurements of PR upon PT as a function of distance include the effect of path loss, shadowing, and multipath. In order to remove the multipath effects, the empirical measurements for path loss typically average their receive power measurements and the corresponding path loss at a given distance over several regions. This average path loss is called the local mean attenuation at distance t. Thus, the empirical path loss for a given environment is defined as the average of the LMA measurements at a distance t averaged over all available measurements in a given environment. Okumura model. One of the most common models of the signal prediction in large urban macro cells is the Okumura model. This model is applicable over distances of 1 to 100 kilometers and frequency ranges of 150 to 1500 megahertz. Okumura used extensive measurements of base station to mobile signal attenuation throughout Tokyo 
to develop a set of curves giving a median attenuation relative to free space of signal propagation in irregular terrain. The empirical path loss formula for commutator distance of D parameterized by the carrier frequency FC is given by PLD dB equal to LFC D plus A mu FC D minus G H T minus G H R minus G area, where LFC D is the free space path loss at distance D and carrier frequency FC. AFC D is the median attenuation in addition to free space path loss across all environments. GHT is the base station antenna height gain factor. GHR is the mobile antenna height gain factor, and G area is the gain due to the type of environment. Okumura's model has a 10 to 14 dB empirical standard deviation between the path loss predicted by the model and the path loss is associated associated with one of the measurements used to develop the model. Hatha model. The Hatha model is an empirical formulation of the geographical path loss data provided by Okumura and is valid over roughly the same range of frequencies 150 to 1500 MHz. This empirical model simplifies the calculation of path loss because it is a closed form formula and is not based on empirical curves for different parameters. The standard formula for empirical path loss in urban areas under the Hatha model is PL urban DDB equal to 69.55 plus 26.16 log 10 FC minus 13.82 log 10 HT minus AHR plus 44.9 minus 6.55 log 10 HT log 10 D. The parameters in this model are the same as under the Okumura model and AHR is the correction factor for the mobile antenna height based on the size of the coverage area where AHR equal to 1.1 log 10 FC minus 0.7 whole HR minus 1.56 log 10 FC minus 0.8 whole dB. Unlike the Okumura model, the Hata model does not provide for any path specific correction factors. The Hata model will approximate the Okumura model for distances D greater than 1 km. Hence, it is a good model for first generation cellular systems but it does not model propagation well in current cellular systems with smaller cell sizes and higher frequencies. Indoor environments are also not captured by the Hartra model. Simplified path loss model. The complexity of signal propagation makes it difficult to obtain a single model that characterizes path loss accurately across a range of different environments. Accurate path loss models can be obtained from complex analytical models or empirical measurements with tight system specification must be met or the best location for base stations or access point layouts must be determined. However, for general trade-off analysis, for various system designs, it is sometimes best to use a simple model like the simplified path loss model. This model captures the essence of signal propagation without resorting to complicated path loss models, which are only approximations to the real time anyway. Thus, the following simplified model for path loss as a function of distance is given by P R equal to P T K T naught upon D whole gamma. The D B attenuation is thus P R D B M equal to P T D B M thus K D B minus 10 gamma log 10 D naught upon D, where K is an interest constant that depends on antenna characteristics and the average channel attenuation. D naught is the reference distance for the antenna for far field, and gamma is the path loss exponent. The values of K, D0 and gamma can be obtained to approximate either an analytical or empirical model. Shadow fading. A signal transmitted through a wireless channel will typically experience random variation due to blockage from objects in signal paths giving rise to random variations of the received power at a given distance. Such variations are also caused by changes in reflecting surfaces and scattering objects. Thus, a model for the random attenuation due to these effects is also needed. The most common model for the additional attenuation were the location, size, dielectric properties of the blocking objects as well as the changes in reflecting surfaces and scattering objects is log normal shadowing. This model has been empirically confirmed to model accurately the variation in received power in both outdoor and indoor radio propagation environments. It is given by P psi xi upon root 2 pi sigma psi exponent minus 10 log 10 psi minus mu whole square upon 2 sigma square for psi greater than 0. 
where z equal to 10 upon ln 10 mu is the mean of psi equal to 10 log 10 psi in db and sigma db is the standard deviation of psi db. Combined path loss and shadowing models for the path loss and shadowing can be superimposed to capture power follow process distance along with a random attenuation about this path loss from shadowing. In this combined model, average db path loss mu psi db is characterized by the path loss model while shadow fading with a mean of 0 db. For this combined model, the ratio of received to transmitted power in db is given by pr upon pt db equal to 10 log 10 k minus 10 gamma log 10 d upon d naught minus psi, where psi is a Gauss distributed, distributed random variable with a mean 0 and various sigma square. The path loss decreases linearly relative to the log 10 d with a slope of 10 gamma db upon dk where gamma is the path loss exponent. These are the references. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate that you took the time to be here and listen to my presentation. Thank you so much.